We are talking Christmas, bloody Christmas. This one is directed and co-written by Joe Begos. And this is your Terminator Christmas movie. Although it kind of really is a horror movie rather than a sci-fi, I would suggest, because it kind of plays pretty much like a slasher film. Well, let's discuss the plot, shall we? This reminds me a lot of an older movie called Class of 1999. And in that movie, uh, we essentially had military re military robots repurposed as teachers, of course, who go awry. And in this one, you have a military robot repurposed as a mall Santa that goes awry. And both movies end up killing, killing a bunch of people. And that's your back your basic setup. So we have this kind of robotic Santa who kind of goes on a kind of killing spree, targeting primarily a group of party revelers, uh, kind of led by our main character, Tori, who is this kind of uh, this badass chick, you know, who doesn't take any crap from anyone, etc., etc. Um, who decides it's going to kind of like target her and her friends and anyone else who comes in her path. And it ends up in a whole bloody mess. Anyway, that is your basic story set up. So let's talk about what I think worked in this movie. What did it do well? Okay, so this movie to me has two distinct halves. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't so keen on the first half. But the second half for me um, was a different type of style of movie, primarily because I feel um, our characters acted differently in the second half. More uh, of, of what you've seen before in kind of like horror movies and things like that. People on the run, people who know what is going on and act accordingly. Now I'll come on to what I didn't like in just a moment. But once we kind of get to the second half of the movie, and it is essentially where the police kind of are introduced and have a role in the movie. Uh, to me, it ended up being admittedly somewhat more of a, you know, generic uh, kind of killer robot on the run movie. But it was a lot more fun, I have to say. This movie is a lot of fun, certainly in the second half at least. Because it kind of, the action doesn't really kind of let up and it is pretty violent. I mean, this Santa... This cyborg Santa, although I suppose it's actually an android rather than a cyborg, but there you go. Uh, this android Santa is pretty unstoppable, and it does seem legitimately dangerous. As the movie goes on, we see how powerful this thing is, how tough it is, and how much punishment it can take. And let me tell you, it doles out the punishment as well to pretty much anyone who it comes across, be they, you know, the police, innocent bystanders, even children. This thing will not stop until everyone is dead. Yeah. So yeah, so it's a pretty kind of non-stop second half of this movie with loads of action, lots of practical effects. Now, uh, this movie, I, I, I think, prides itself somewhat on the kind of the practical effects because uh, there's lots of, you know, bodies getting chopped in half, heads getting shot with shotguns and things like this, body parts getting kind of ripped off, all done practically. And you could argue Sometimes it looks a little hokey, but to me it's that kind of throwback feel that this movie is certainly trying to exude. It's trying to be somewhat of a, uh, a throwback movie, I would say, to the late 80s, the early 90s of those kind of cyborg on the loose movies, plus a kind of a, you know, a nice kind of Christmas slasher film. Um, and, I, and I have to say, I, I prefer the characters, even though they, you know, it's, it's just people on the run ultimately. Uh, I'll come on to why I had some problems with the, kind of the characters in, in a minute. But to me, once we kind of get into the second half and the danger is revealed, uh, you know, I think our characters act pretty panicked, like you, I would, you know, I would imagine that you would do, and just seem to be uh, a little bit more of a kind of relatable kind of like uh, characters to that point on, really not knowing what to do, panicking, kind of, kind of trying to kind of find any way to kind of defend themselves and really not have any idea about what they're going up. And that's really not just our main character, but also the various kind of police officers and things like that that we'll kind of see uh, in that kind of that second half of the movie as well, which I kind of, as I, I quite enjoyed. There are some stylistic choices here by the director to make it have this kind of grindhouse feel to it. There's a kind of a, um, like a filter on, on the whole movie to kind of give it this kind of old fashioned sort of style of feel to it, kind of like a, um, you know, scratches and things like this. I don't know if it particularly helps the film, if I'm honest, um, because it's it feels more like a kind of 
I can say like an early 90s film in some ways rather than a kind of like 70s film which is the kind of the aesthetic of this kind of filter or the way it's kind of film really kind of lets off but there you go and considering this is meant to be a you know an android Santa it should be kind of futuristic not really kind of looking back in the 70s and things but whatever there were some choices made I'm not quite sure if they all work for me but I appreciate the attempt to have a at least a kind of a, a stylistic signature in the movie okay so what didn't work for me the big problem here with this movie I think the first half is for me at least a quite a drag now how to describe the first half of this movie if I could describe the first half of this movie as a person it would be the person who turns up at a house party and brings a guitar and everyone else is going oh Christ it's a look at it's a look at me sort of style person and then we are introduced to this kind of cast of characters including our main character Tori and they're all like super edge lords. Look at me, I'm so edgy, I'm so badass, you know. I'll drop F-bombs every kind of 30 seconds and uh, I'm like, you know, screw the world kind of type of attitude. And I'm so, like, I drink loads and I smoke drugs and I do all this and I just shag in shops and, and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, so we, we're so cool. We're so like hip and blah -de blah And I don't, I'm too good for Christmas and things. I'm too good to meet this guy or whatever. And, um, yeah, the characters were pretty unlikable. And it's how they, you know, we were introduced to them like that. And then this, the whole second, or the, the whole first half of the movie, sorry, is just these characters, for the most part, prattling on about what band is better, what film is better, what they think, what one thinks they should do about this other one's love life, things like this. And it's just this constant kind of, like, grating kind of like um, ch nails on chalkboard kind of conversations with these kind of like characters seeming to talk in high volume screeching at each other who are distinctly unlikable so I had some real problems with the kind of the, the, the character work here I mean maybe it's me maybe I'm a grumpy old man who doesn't get the kids or whatever but there it is I thought the uh, the character work here for these people was kind of annoying but I think it thinks it's badass. That's the thing with this movie. I think that the, it thinks these characters are like this super kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, we're so cool. We're so cool. No, they're not. Anyway, another stylistic choice, as I've said, was to have this kind of filter. And it makes it kind of hard to see what's going on. It doesn't help that this movie is obviously set during the night. And with a kind of a, a constant kind of like snowstorm going on. So you've already got two things that are kind of disrupting your, your viewing, so to speak. Then we have this filter. And there are some sequences here that you just feel like, I just cannot see what is going on. And it's just, it's kind of distracting. Another stylistic choice to go with our kind of like air quotes, badass characters, rock and roll attitude is to have this kind of uh, constant, again, at least in the first half, this kind of rock heavy metal music kind of playing, sometimes quite loud, drowning out dialogue uh, for the majority of the scenes in the first half of the movie. And, you know, I, I kind of like rock music. I've done a video about my kind of growing up with heavy metal and everything. But even I kind of get fed up with this kind of constant kind of like noise uh, is that I find quite distracting when I'm trying to understand dialogue or get a kind of a grip on the kind of characters and I think it's overused in the first half of the movie. I know the movie's trying to depict these characters as kind of like rock and roll rebels and stuff like that but it, I think it goes, it just because it uses it a little bit too much where it becomes distracting. Um, so to me this movie uh, is kind of a movie of two halves. I, I'll be honest with you, I was like, oh, oh these characters are kind of unbearable. But once we kind of get the danger, we end up kind of then not having these kind of like, um, you know, frivolous kind of conversations about the price of eggs or whatever. And we get into the kind of the second half. I think the movie feels a lot more like a what you've seen before. That might not necessarily be a good thing for some people, but I feel you it's more of a kind of a thing where you feel like you can root to the character because we know they're in a danger and they're not they're not just being, you know, annoying or pathetic or whatever. So for me. Uh, I enjoyed the second half of this movie, but I feel the first half was a poor setup. And you could argue as well, you know, we, don't, we really don't know 
the, the reasons why this kind of robotic Santa is targeting Viscal in particular. We don't know what its parameters are. We don't really know why there's a, um, you know, an ex-military uh, robot, which I would have imagined costs millions, sat in a kind of a toy shop. It seems like a little bit kind of um, a, a, a stretched out concept for a, a setup for a movie. You know, maybe it could have got there by mistake, I don't know, but it doesn't seem that doesn't have seemed to be the case. It seems to be it's there because you've got these kind of fake adverts in the beginning of the movie. So, you know, I think there's some logic issues here that you could just go, blah, 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 blah. it's fine, it's fine, it's kind of a Christmas B movie or whatever. Um, you know, there you go. But uh overall, if you can get through this the first half of the movie, um it's an enjoyable schlocky kind of like action fest at the end. And, I, and like I said, I think the actual kind of, once we get to that part, it's pretty exciting. This, this sound does seem particularly kind of like uh, hard to kill, dangerous. It never seems to kind of quite be dead. And our characters seem to act, you know, dial down the kind of like the craziness and the edge lord kind of like style kind of thing they're doing to be more kind of like, um, you know, just regular kind of people to, to be honest with you. So, you know, it's kind of, it ends up being somewhat of a kind of a middle of the road film at the end of the day. It's not bad. I would give it a 5 out of 10. But I wouldn't say this movie was particularly kind of a, a classic. And I would probably, ever would, if I ever watched this again, I would just skip the first half. So it's a 5 out of 10 for me. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.